And the first one up is called Crack the Code, the science of social media success with our esteemed presenter, Dr. JC Bonilla. Now I have to let you know, JC is Artist's co-host on Generation AI, which is one of our newer Enrollify podcasts. And I mean, AI got you, right? The two of them, they are hosting the fastest growing podcast on our network. The content is incredible. They drop new episodes every single week, sometimes even bonus episodes. We have, if we've not learned anything in the last day and a half, we have certainly learned how important AI is and how quick quickly it's moving. And so when something happens in the world of artificial intelligence, the two of them are hopping into Riverside, recording an episode and getting it out there. So I highly recommend hit up Spotify, hit up Apple Podcasts and subscribe to it. It's amazing. But we're here to talk about social media today, JC. So let's put our hands together and welcome JC Bonilla. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody. I'm JC, and excited to see some of these old faces, friends of mine, and new faces. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, so yes, I do this podcast with artists, but I am a friend of Element. Um, I do all these things uh, outside the Element realm, but I've been with the company for a long, long, long time. Happy to tell you that the first iteration of this uh, is something that I was very involved in, and it only had seven universities. So seeing now 700 of you, it's quite a success. So thank you all for the support that you give to the product, and more importantly, how you're making the product better. I want to bring a non-element 451 page to the conversation today. Um, I work with this guy, Gary Vaynerchuk. I actually uh, run the analytics uh, practice globally for VaynerMedia. And this book just dropped. Artists and I actually spoke about it on, on a podcast, and we realized that at its core, I would say 90% of you, of us, are communicators, marketers, and are trying to do something at the intersection of recruitment, communications, marketing, and operations. And I believe that what I do 9 to 5 when I'm not helping Element is very relevant today. So I'd like to start with a video that I hope all of you recognize. Raise your hand if you've seen this. Love that. That's me when I had hair. And that tattoo is only $10,000 uh, of work. This is dog face. Um, Skip out of this. Nathan launches this video when we didn't understand what TikTok was all about. And what we're able to capture here is virality at its best. We all know what virality means. But do this mental framework with me. If an ad at the very end marketing is designed to bring sales, recruitment, leads, and it metric of performance, this is probably one of the most successful marketing ads ever invented. Why? If you look at these two metrics at the bottom, sales lift 50, 000, uh, 50x. The shelves of ocean spray, the cranberry juice, were empty after this human posted that video. Household penetration, you know how difficult it is to gain two points in household penetration? That means that families like me who do not consume ocean spray uh, cranberry juice because for my kids it has too much sugars, all of a sudden I'm using it because I do love a good you know, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan uh, cocktail. And all of a sudden I'm starting to consume that. Think about the halo effect. The song goes number one in the uh, YouTube like replay sectors, the royalties for a production that is from 1970s. He gets a contract and he actually drops the song with uh, Snoop Dogg. What you start seeing is a production of what? 30 cents? Because all it took is some skills and skateboards, right? And the right moment in time and doing this. How much did it cost? 30 seconds? 30 cents? I don't know. 
this is basically the premise of the modern advertisement framework that I'm part of, and I believe your school needs. I wouldn't be here speaking with a conviction that I have because I've done what, you, what I think you do today <laughs> about 20 years ago, and I couldn't launch a video or an ad. The most successful marketing campaign that I ever did was in the New York Times. It cost us $42,000, and it recruited, you know how many students? But my faculty, they loved it because somehow I was running a marketing production, a recruitment production that is trying to recruit students, but on the right-hand side, I got marketing and advertising being informed by boardrooms. Faculty members who believe that the brand, academic brand, needs to be represented this way. Uh, educators and leaders who have not basically spent a minute in the classroom, and all of a sudden we're selling the classroom experience. That's the reality of marketing today. Boardrooms inform the content. And what I believe you guys can get from this book, by the way, happy to give it away, it's signed by Gary. So if, if you want it, first person here, I'll give it to you at the end. Um, it's that at the center of modern marketing, there's social media. And what I'm going to walk you through is how we do this. Um, the reason why we actually have it in a textbook and I'm able to talk about it, it's hard to do. So it's very technical, technical and tactical. And then I'm going to give you the measurement analytics point of view because it has a complement on performance. So the conversation is not about social media. I don't want you to think that this is about how to use TikTok. It's about where attention is at today. And you'll see this in the book, but many of us who do this, if tomorrow TikTok doesn't do what it's supposed to do and it's actually called radio, we're going to be in radio. It's about where the supply and demand of attention lands. And today, you can get underpriced attention, significant underpriced attention in social media. Look at this graph. What you see here, it's a timeline of attention. On the, your left-hand side, right, is the emergent side. These are things that we're experimenting with. In the middle section is where we know attention is at. And on the right-hand side, it's overpriced attention. You know where that is? That's TV. That it's carousels in social media. Um, some cultural moments that are no longer uh, playing. But what you start seeing here, and think about what this means. I'm not speaking of TikTok. I'm speaking about with, within TikTok, the ability to do uh, photo mode. Within YouTube, shorts and reels. Comments, specifically. Uh, for all the uh, uh, social media platforms within Facebook groups. What we're going to be doing in the next 22 and 39 seconds, um, it's, I'm going to walk you through why this works and how you should start unpacking this at home, whether it's a school, our education, a community college, or any marketing operation. So to recap, what you're seeing here, it's a different change of mind. And they trade an attention, this book, the framework that we practice is that today brands tell us what to market without a consumer-centric voice. I truly believe that if you really want to get Johnny, 15-year-old Johnny, to sign up for your program, you need to speak to Johnny. And you know who Johnny doesn't talk to? Professor Bonilla or Professor Smith, who we usually come and influence your marketing agenda or the view books of the production. And what you see on the left-hand side, it's how an ad looks like today. I was talking to my wife over um, the weekend, like, what are you talking about? I was like, we're talking about this. Like, well, yeah, but that's not an ad. That's my point, that if I don't convince you that whatever happens in this phone is an ad, I did not deliver in the next 20 minutes. OK? So why is this the new advertisement framework? How many of you? have followers in your social media? How many of you track followers in your social media channels of your institutions? Irrelevant. I can tell you today definitively, someone who studies algorithms, someone who is, I go to product sessions with the uh, social media platforms, Meta, Google, TikTok. This is not how an ad, social media ad is being served. So let me elaborate. 
It started with a social interest graph. Artists and I are connected, and I got to see his content because, you know, we are connected. And all the connections I have here, over the uh, time, you got to see my feed. But when TikTok emerges, TikTok changes the way organic rank works, and I'm going to explain that, through what is called an interest graph. So what you see on the graphic, the social graph, is me being connected to a friend. So I saw that feed. Every time someone was dancing or saying something funny, interesting, or ridiculous, I saw it because I'm part of that feed. Today, I get to see things that I'm interested in. TikTok developed that. And the content that you see, things, things that go viral, have nothing to do with the follower count. In other words, if your university, uh, I don't know, Texas, and you're managing a brand of University of Texas, you're competing with every university in Texas, and Johnny, who thinks that the sob in the cafeteria is amazing, and he posts a video, and also in that video, it's the representation of the brand. And because why? Everyone who thought about breakfast, lunches, and subs, all of a sudden starts getting that. So let me explain this with a personal story. That's a lift. That's my daughter. And yeah, I adore my kids. But you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm into girls and she's into me. Like that typical, yes, ridiculous dad girl uh, thing. So in my feed, when I type in that girl, this is what I get. But all of a sudden, the algo decides to serve me this. This is what my social media looks like. I don't have anything in connections with, you know, dad girls or what you start seeing is that algorithmically it is making a decision that I am going to love this because the algorithm is designed for attention so that you continue this infinite loop of swap, swipes or going down and you don't end. And if I didn't like this, you know what's going to try? The next thing. Maybe it's going to be, you know, you know, trying to teach my boys something or nothing about parenting, right? This is basically what we have at hand. The idea that the performance of an ad is a function of the interest that you, 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 you have, right? <clears throat> On this book, you'll start seeing these graphs, and I'm just going to take you through how this works. And I think this is a really important playbook for all of you. If you are running a marketing team today, recruitment team, I highly recommend you try to replicate this in your own institution. So we're going to start with a cohort. This is not a persona. A cohort is who do you think is going to react to the interest in the social media algorithm? And remember, I'm doing this so that I can present modern marketing. And I'm going to end up with this. And you know what? Super Bowl ads. I'm representing this from the lens of we are the agency that has done the most Super Bowl ads in the world. Two of them that I'm going to present today come from this, specifically social media. So it starts with a cohort. You know what a cohort is? All the assumptions from 1P data, 3P data, social conversations, demographics, uh, in-market, business priorities, focus groups that you do in the cafeteria, um, the aspirational class that you want to recruit, the historical data of your recruitment class, and so on and so forth. And they do not look like Gen Zers, young millennials, or boomers, groups that you're trying to represent. You know what it actually looks like? 27 to 34 Hispanic males in the Southwest, uh, in, in the Southwest interested in basketball. Think about this as a cohort. It's a creative inspiration. So all of a sudden what I do is I'm start, going to start creating content that is representative of a 50-year-old skincare buyer in urban cities obsessed with all the Bravo tea. Or 20 to 30-year-olds know that now taking on to the role of the grocery shopper in the family. That's me, by the way. This is what a cohort is. This is how segmentation and targeting should work in social media. 
is a representation of a creative hypothesis that you think the algo is going to amplify in terms of interest graphs. But there's a really important nuance. It requires the perfect targeting assumption wrapped around culture and platforms. What do I mean with that? Do you know what culture is? Summer vibes right now. If your content doesn't have summer vibes, it's not going to do as best as, you know, things that are, we're not talking about. Three months ago, it was Gaza, Israel, right? We, that was how the conversation is dominated. Now start thinking about platforms. TikTok, three years ago, was all about dancing, right? Uh, and Mallory was doing her moves. I'm not going to do my moves, trust me. You don't want that. Um, but then all of a sudden, you start seeing the duets, green screens, these techniques that the algo produces so that you can use it natively. And you know what the algo doesn't like? Highly curated content. Think about it. We're product people, Element. If we design a feature in Element, we're going to compensate you for using it. Guess what TikTok, Facebook, and all the other social platforms do? The same thing. Why would they like highly curated content that doesn't use their you know, in-phone native features? So the blend between platform features and culture is what grabs a cohort and it gives it a chance or high propensity for going somewhere. If you go to TikTok, this is basically all the trends today. This is a screenshot of yesterday. I don't even know 80% of them, right? Uh, but there's people that specialize in this, right? And then they go from dancing to you know, uh, cultural to platforms, but your content needs to have these ingredients to come and succeed. Everyone with me? All right. This is a great example of how we've done this. What you start seeing is, this is for a, one of our clients in Indonesia, and what we see is that there is a way to do content where we project three different things, and this is during Ramadan um, uh, days, so it's the first son, the second, and the third, and basically it's playing the same video at different speeds. All of a sudden, that's a platform feature. You know what we do? We tell every account this has worked, and we replicate it. So my point here is that you look at a trend that is working, and it has, doesn't have to be a university, and you're going to copy it and see how it works with your content. That's basically the first part that I want uh, to land here. The targeting and the deploying the, tar the, the assumption with platforms and culture. All right. What I want to showcase here as I move into this graph is how does the content look like? This is the hardest thing for our brands because what you start seeing is that the academic brand, it's not going to be respected. These beautiful logos are going to change because that's where relevance and attention is. Left hand, starting with the right hand side, about 70 million views. This is an ad for Wingstop. Where's the logo? Nowhere. But it generated 70,000 million views. And it's all about dipping a wing into a ranch fountain. People love ranch. They want to put it on their faces. We didn't know that. Um, we're selling coach bags in a very, this is actually moving product. Duracell, this is actually a viral ad that uses celebrities. Or look at bows with black and white and literally curation that to a product person, marketing professional, like how can you talk about the product this way? But this is basically what modern marketing looks like. This I'm going to scare you with. This is Brisk out in Canada. The most successful campaign looks like paint 1995. Our marketers and brand managers there almost had a heart attack. And we had to really say, this is going to work. And indeed, it worked. The engagement rate, they've never seen those. By the way, these are organic. We're not paying paid behind this. Um, Tubi, basically working with these influencers, Commit into it. This is the type of audience that your cohorts want, not the stereotypical people that you know they think they want to aspire. 
Indeed, break it up. You're looking for jobs? This is basically the modern professional. And, you know, types of drinks, uh, Syrac and whatnot. So, just to give you the color and the context of what we're proposing. But why do we want to do this? Because at the end of the day, we're launching an ad to create the idea that this is going to work. And it's costing us very little. You know how ads work today? You have an assumption, it usually comes from a boardroom. If you're very, very good, you get a focus group of what, four people? And they tell you, I love it. And then you put, I don't know, $100 million into a Super Bowl production? A $50,000 ad in your newspaper, radio? Think about how it works. What I just unpacked is that if you go through these motions, the algo is telling you it works. The likes, the comments, the shares are validating that there's something behind here. Once that happens, put money on it. Your first dollar needs to be placed only if this stuff works, right? So how does that look like? Has, did anyone see this in the Super Bowl uh, two years ago? It came out of a LinkedIn post where we learn that people have a feud for eating nuts in bars one at a time or a handful. It cost us. Why do you eat mixed nuts one at a time? Why do you eat them all together? If only you were as selective with your rolls as you are with your nuts. Hey, here's a thought. Why don't I just get you a feedback? They're called mixed nuts. You're supposed to mix them. <laughs> Internet. How do you like your mixed nuts? One at a time? Or all together the right way? Sent. Like anyone's gonna care. Hey, it's Ken Jeong. Do you enjoy your mixed nuts one at a time? Huh. All together the right way. <laughs> all. One at a time? You're a one nutter. So you don't make any decisions? Why are you buying mixed nuts and then unmixing them? Oh, you're a foodie now. Question on America's mind. Is it all? Or one. Huh. Who knew America would tear itself apart over a relatively minor difference of opinion? Mm. Not me. My biggest point here is that ad that I just showed you is a classical ad. Super Bowl. What is it? As of uh, today, we're talking about $7 million per 30 seconds. But the idea is that it didn't come from the hypothesis that it was going to work. We knew it was going to work. Why? Because it went through this framework. What I'd love to do now is skip through these slides and give you a preview of how you start thinking about the measurement part. Um, I would not be standing here if I don't add math to the conversation. Uh, I'm a math person. And it's a really important aspect that these are hypotheses, but how do you validate the intelligence that something is happening here? So if you were to look at this chart, from the book to how we present it to the clients and, and folk. We use this chart, it's the same thing. Start with the cohort, make sure that the cohort is relevant, create your ads, and then do socially informed campaigns. And it's a learning feedback mechanism. What I want to show you is how this feedback mechanism will use the math, okay? So, if you do organic in your institutions, I guarantee you there's gonna follow this signature. I've been studying our organic signature for more than two years, so it's more than 200,000 variations of organic posts, and I can tell you definitively that 80% of your work goes nowhere. Between 14 to 20% has enough of a signature that it has over-index in your organic metrics. Say that you're school A, Miami, and you're school B, Dallas. In TikTok, the number of impressions that you need to beat is 8,000. You, Miami, I'm going to give you 22,000. So what I mean with that is that out of, a hun out of 10 posts, only two of them are going to beat that impression. Each of you have a signature organically in your platforms. How often do you beat it is basically what we're trying to uh, measure. We do not measure virality. There's one thing I can tell you is that virality is an act of God. It's very difficult to reproduce. So this the science aspect of this is how do you do these yellow things, which is basically what I call the opportunity space. There's a signal, this, there's a signal here, and what is it? Um, so 
So it's about volume. If you do one social media ad, I recommend you do 10. Because what I just told you is that based on the odds of success and organic performance, two out of your 10 ads are, are, have the chance to go somewhere. 80% of your work, or eight out of 10, are basically gonna be baseline. They're not gonna get the impressions, the likes, the shares, that make you think this goes to the next level. Um, little technical, but this is really important. It's a time series that you're analyzing. What does that mean? On your axis is time. In your Y is gonna be impressions. And why do I say that? Remember how in COVID we used to say cases are up or down? They were usually measured in a 14 day window, right? 14 days, these are up and down because it looked like this, ups and downs. So they're called peaks. The reason why it's important to start thinking about how you analyze organic performance this way is because there's a baseline at 80% and the remaining opportunity, which is the land of the work, is the peaks. And detecting peaks is really interesting, right? So if you have many more impressions, many more engagements, many more views or reach. Um, than your baseline. The second component, and these are the brands and these are actual signatures, is that within the peaks, you can get a trend. Am I up, am I down, or flat? That's literally where it fits. As a creative institution, you always want to start doing organic content in your social media or paid content that has a trend, hopefully is up. It's very hard to do because the algo is changing on your face on a day-to-day -day basis. So the way we speak of this, this is actually uh, data from uh, Pepsi. It's where is the trend and do I have creative flatlining or creative relevance? In other words, is my, string, my trend flat or going down? Hey, we're flatlining. Change it up. New cohorts, new uh, platform signatures, you name it, right? Or there's creative relevance. It's going up. Why? Stay at there. Continue, basically, give a phone to your ambassadors and ask them for 10 videos, right? And then two of them are going to work, and you're going to tell them this is basically the features that I need to come and replicate. Why? Because you recognize that there's creative relevance. And really advanced work is that you can start predicting and forecasting how many impressions you're gonna come and get. Why? Because if the premise is that social media informs all your marketing spending for the year, right? Think about it this way. Am I getting enough impressions in the next two weeks or the next month so I can inform the spend of the next two weeks, one month, or two months? That's really where this becomes the science that complements the art of the beginning. So to wrap it up, there's a lot of things that I want to show here. The strategy of modern marketing, it's that there's an idea, but the idea needs to be validated before investment runs. To do that, social media at the center of marketing is where it's at. But remember, social media, it's about the interest. It's about the idea that how I relate to you it's, as a human, temporal, and based on the behaviors I'm pursuing. But once you find right, blow it up, amplify it. And this is how socially informed campaigns actually work. What I can tell you is that this is how I've seen shifts in culture, how performance truly gets deployed. That planters in other organizations like this um, crack culture, and bring value. Going back to the first video, this is how product gets moved. Enrollments, registrations, applications make a dramatic change. So think about this from the point of view of a framework, and I hope you can really bring it home. Feel free to contact us. This is my email ID. Anything you want to talk about, we're here to help. But also our element team, it's really at par with this body work. Thank you. All right, GC, that was incredible. As our next two presenters come up and start to switch out their machine, 
Who has a question for JC? Do we eat the mixed nuts one by one, JC, <laughs> or do we get a big handful and scoop them up? I'm a one nodder. <laughs> All right. Well, that was terrific, JC. Thank you so very much.